Okay, so I built this jig about a year and a half ago, and I wanted a jig that I could take with me on site whenever I go to a shoot or when I'm just hanging out with buddies. So we can just have some uh, pieces of TheraBand and our roller cutters here, and everything we need on site to build bands as we please. Um, a lot of us slingshot shooters, we like to use a chronograph and run things uh, over and over again and build bands just for specific setups. So this is what I've come up with here. So what we've got here is I've taken, it was a Fiskars package, and I bought this at Walmart. So this, this pad here, the self-healing cutting mat, and this roller cutter, I believe is right around $15. So what I've done here is I've just built, I've bought a couple of toggle clamps, and um, let me show you what I've got here. So the way I make my bands, is I've got the, the self-healing cutting mat here, and every band that I want to make, I've got a different template for it. So this is one of my favorite hunting band combinations. This is one and a quarter to three quarter over a nine inch length. And I just make these out of Lexan. I coat the back of them in a sandpaper of some sort. And what I've got here, so let's show you how it works. So we've got a piece of TheraBand cut at nine inches. And let's just say, for example, that we want to uh, cut this taper right here. So I just move it right up against this fence here. I'm going to use my taper jig to put it in place. This assures me that I've got a clean edge all the way across. Once I lock it in place, the Lexan or polycarbonate that I use for the jig holds it very steady so the rubber can't move, thus the reason for the um, abrasive on the bottom. And then I just use my roller cutter to work right along that edge. And when I do so, I get a really clean edge and my roller cutter that pass was really dull, so any time that it doesn't cut clean, you want to stop. Now one of the downsides of this particular jig is that we use the same spot every time. So if you have one particular favorite taper that you cut a lot, it's going to wear out in that one spot. But outside of that, you've got this whole cutting area. So if I wanted to take my whole roll of TheraBand, I could lay it out, measure out the length. If I were cutting custom tapers, it would be really easy to work that out on this jig. But these two here really lock it in place. Not necessarily necessary, but they work really well. The next thing I've got here is to tie the bands up. So um, I've got a, a band set here that I'm ready to tie up. So I've got my pouch, and I built this around the pouch that I use all the time. I only use Super Sure pouches, and they're two, in, uh, two inches and nine sixteenths of an inch long. So I've built this jig to give me the perfect amount of stretch. So um, let me show you how quickly I can build a band set here. So we've got them cut out. I run it through the pouch, lock it in place. Keep my string right here on site with my scissors. They go right back in there. I like to use a clove hitch. And the reason I use a clove hitch is because I can tie it that quickly and slip it right onto the pouch. Um, a lot of folks use a constrictor knot, which is not that much harder to um, do, but um, I just like a clove hitch. It's what I'm used to. And then I do pre-stretch a little bit. So I've got this set up here. This pouch has been used before, but super sure pouches don't stretch that much. So we can still see here. I've set this up. Um, I don't know if we can see here. This pouch is stretched, but I've built it to where I've got my jig to where it's set up to where it's right on the edge of this pouch. So when I pull it to the far edge right here and lock it into place, I've got just the amount of pre-stretched tension for this pouch. Now that's something I like to pay attention to. I feel like if you overstress your rubber as you tie it in, you're going to get band failure a little bit sooner. Um, I think there's some varying opinions out there. That's just the way I do it. And I lock it in place, of course, and do the same side the other way. But that's how this side works. So this came about from an evolution. And uh, so I started out, let me show you what I started out with here. So this is what I started out with. And I started out simply with a board, two clamps, and I drilled these out to be a quarter inch just because I'm using quarter inch posts here. And you can see I've got some adjustment here. But when I lock these in place, we'll just show you really quick. So if I were to tie a, a band on this, run my rubber into the pouch,
This provides a really nice clamp. Put that onto the jig. Again, I use a clove hitch, and the reason I use a clove hitch is because I can tie it that quickly. And then I've got it set up to where I have a reference point on these pouches. All these Super Sure pouches come with a relief slit. So I work my clamp just to the edge of that relief slit. That way I'm pre-stressing each band set exactly the same. And I just lock it into place. And that gives me a nice stretch right there. Just a maybe an eighth to three sixteenth of an inch of stretch. A gentle pull. You don't need to get really aggressive there. And cut it off. Well, that's how they first started out. That's really simple. This is nice. I can take this on the road. That's a really small band tying jig, being made out of anything. And as I evolved, I created this one. And what I did here, same concept for tying, but I built it around this Fiskars jig that I bought from Walmart. And I was able to pull these pins out here. And I put holes in the end, right here, so I could store them. And I could take this cutting mat, apply it right here. Let's assume that cutting mat is right there. I could bring my rubber to the edge of the surface here. So I have a square surface. I would apply my band cutting jig. And then I would lock it in place with the same clamps that I used to tie with. And then I would come back in here and simply cut my tapers. So this is a multi-use jig. And this actually works pretty darn well. And it's really cheap to build. You can get these clamps for about a dollar at Lowe's or any home improvement store. I use brass and aluminum for these pins, but you could certainly use quarter inch dowels, hardwood dowels. And you've got tools in most anybody's shop to build this jig. But eventually, it came to this one. And this one works pretty well. We've got a place for the scissors. And one thing that I wanted to point out is that I do use the clove hitch. And the clove hitch isn't quite as stable as the constrictor nut, but never fear. We use a little bit of water-based fly tying cement that you'd use to whip a fly with. It doesn't affect the rubber, and it locks the knot in. So the knot's more durable than the rubber. So you'll never have a failure there. So that's uh, the way that we've uh, tinkered around with jigs here at Flipping Out Slingshots. Hope that worked out for you, and enjoy. Take care, guys. Shoot them straight.